Tiger Kid, and welcome to another awesome Kid Time Story Time! Haha! <laughs> Thanks, Mickey, for that awesome introduction. Are you going on vacation? I sure am! Got my camera, got my walking sandals, and I'm going to Puerto Rico! Excellent! And we have a story that originates from Puerto Rico today. Oh! This is perfect! Exactly. It is called La Mula. La Mula! Also known as the Cimarron Mule. Let's get this party started! Wow. I love a good enthusiastic mouse, don't you? Okay, kid, here we go. Bandits shoved La Mula. Remember, that's the mule. Bandits shoved La Mula, hurrying her along the mountainous path. La Mula groaned as she carried the heavy sack of grain and barrels of wine along the narrow trail. Go on, you lazy mule, the bandit shouted and whipped her. They pushed her so hard, she lost her footing and almost plunged down the sharp ravine. Watch your step, mule, or we'll skin you alive. Oh, they sound very unpleasant, these bandits. She traveled without rest and with little food, only grazing alongside the road for nourishment. Poor Mula. Weeks passed until the bandits finally reached the port of Cadiz in southern Spain. That's a very lovely city. You should visit it sometime. The wicked bandits sold the contraband. The mules included for a few more coins, they bargained. On board the ship, La Mula rested herself and licked her wounds. Poor thing. At night, she wondered where she was going. Who would be her next masters? Would they treat her kindly? La Mula sighed. Only time will tell. At the docks of San Juan Harbor, now we're in Puerto Rico from Spain, La Mula was taken to the marketplace. There, barrels of olives and crates and salted codfish and saddle leathers and other goods from the ship were being sold. And La Mula was also sold to the highest bidder. Come with me, you stubborn mule, bellowed Don Eduardo, the road engineer. La Mula trembled when she heard his mean voice. As her new master, Don Eduardo, worked La Mula long hours and gave her little food. She labored alongside the slaves who were treated no better. There are all the slaves working and there's La Mula carrying a huge load of stuff. Oof, rough, 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 rough. From sunrise to sundown, La Mula and the slaves toiled, clearing and building the roads. One day, when she was hardly able to stand, La Mula cried for help. Help me! Please give me water! She brayed. To us it sounded like, ah, ah, but that's what she was actually saying. The workers ignored her, but one slave, Otilio, Otilio, offered her a cool drink. Here, my friend, he told her, since we both work like mules, let me share my water. Otilio also shared his lunch. Soon, they became friends. Why, that slave Otilio gets more work from that stubborn mule than I do, said Don Eduardo. I'll pair them together and make them work even harder. But Otilio had confided in La Mula. I am planning our escape, he said. We will go up into the hills where my people, los cimarrones, are. We were all once slaves who ran away. My people are proud and they are free. A year ago, I was captured when I left my village to hunt for meat. But once we return, we will live in freedom too. The following week, in the dark of night, they fled that wretched work camp. During the day, Otilio and La Mula hid in the caves, avoiding search parties. They traveled only at night. In the dark and dense, steep woods, Otilio mounted La Mula. You must be my eyes and guide our steps, Mula, whispered Otilio. If you fail and they capture us, we will both die. I will not fail you, master, she softly brayed, which sounded more like this. Oh, oh, but that's what she was actually saying. 
La Mula used her talent for climbing and kept, crept up snake-like trails. She strode by the vertical cliffs, taking only the right number of steps along the cramped slopes to avoid toppling to her sure death. With each passing night, they got farther and farther away from their enemies. There they go through the night, whispering. And then, uh, one day, Otilio shouted, We're home, Mula! and pointed to his village. Oh, at last, free at last. Los Cimarrones, all these people, prepared a big feast celebrating the return of Otilio. They must have missed him terribly. La Mula has been my friend and companion all these many months. She led me to freedom. She is now one of us, he declared. Let's call her La Mula Cimarrona, said Asunta, the village curandera. Curandera means that she is a healer. Sometimes it's also the same word that tribes use to describe a wise person. In the years that followed, other slaves escaped and joined Los Cimarrones. La Mula Cimarrona carried water and food, worked to build boios and bates. Boios are huts and bates are front yards. So she worked to build boios, huts, and bates, front yards. She lived a long, happy, and fruitful life. To this day, she continues to be revered and remembered as La Mula Cimarrona, who helped to expand a Cimarron village of free people on the island of Puerto Rico. The end. Bravo! Bravo! Bravo, brave mula! You brave mule! Oh, that is exhausting. I think I need a vacation after hearing that exhausting story. Well, you're ready. You got your camera? I do! And your walking sandals? I do! And uh, your tropical shirt? Huh? <laughs> Let's go traveling! That's right. And if you can't travel, Kate, remember, you can just go traveling on...